Next is our final task, task number three with explicit path and lockdown. So we need to recon reconfigure our tunnel one to explicitly traverse R1, R3, R4, R5, and R2 in this order. Okay, so let's see. So one, three, is it again, four, five, two. So up to four, down to five, and then to two. So this is gonna be our TE tunnel. We're gonna have to come up with an explicit path for this. So the way to do that is very similar to what we just did with the exclude path, but this time we're gonna come up with another, a new, um, let's see, IP explicit path name, which is gonna name this one explicit enable. And here, this is where we're gonna be using our next address option. So every hop is gonna be a next address. If you the question mark, you can see that you can either enter the IP address of the next hop, or you can specify as the loose keywords or a strict keyword. So just to give you an explanation, the loose keywords mean the next hop doesn't have to be directly connected next hop, so it can be multiple hops away. What's happening or which path the router is going to pick for the intermediate routers or hops is totally up to the router. So basically it's a combination of doing explicit and dynamic if you just want to only fix part of the path and then the other part can be completely dynamic, then you can use the loose keywords. Okay, strict on the other hand, make sure that the next hop is the same connected or shares the same subnet. So you kind of lock it down a little bit more as far as what the next hop's gonna be. Okay, but for us, it's good enough just to use a generic next address. So starting with router R1, the next address is gonna be that interface IP right there. So 172.16.13.3. Okay, and every time you can see that once you enter an entry, it kind of echoes the current content of the explicit path for you. And the next one's gonna be this interface right here on R4, so that would be uh, 34.4. So now we have two entries. Next one is interface right there, that's 45.5. .5. And the last hop, it's gonna be the interface on R2, and that's 25.5. Okay, so just to explore the other options, you can, let's say right now we have four entries in there, but if you happens to insert a line in between, you can use the append after keywords right here. Okay, you can use the index keyword if you want to selectively delete an entry from the list. Just again, just like the access list. And if you want to see the content of the whole explicit path, you can use the list command to kind of show it to you right there. Okay, now going back to the tunnel one, tunnel MPLLS traffic inch path option one. Now we're gonna explicitly define that, followed by name, and the name is explicit. Okay, then do show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel. You can see it's saying that right now the state is RSVP signaling proceeding. So it's going through the path reservation process right now, as well as the MPLS label distribution. So you have to give it a couple seconds. Okay, you can see the path right here says it's valid. So that is a good sign. And eventually the tunnel line protocol comes up. That means the tunnel setup should have been completed. And right here we have our explicit route listed and the operational state of the tunnel is up. So that means it should be usable. If you're trying to confirm that from R6 to another trace routes, we should now be going through our one, three, four, five, two, seven, just like how we have it listed in our explicit path configuration. Okay, next we need to uh, shut down the link between R3 and R4 and observe the tunnel behavior. So we're gonna shut down this link right here and that's serial 000 on R3. So on R3, shut down. Okay, give it a couple seconds for the R1 to realize that the link between R3 and R4 is no longer available. Right there, line protocol went down, and now if you check the status of the tunnel, you can see the state is now down, and the path is marked as not valid. And if you kind of scroll all the way down to the bottom here with the last error of the path calculation, it said explicit path has unknown address. It's telling you it's 34.4 address is unknown, which means it's not available. And sure enough, because the link is down, that 
particular subnet is not known by the router, and that's why it's complaining or marking it as an unknown address. Okay, so using the explicit path option, you basically telling the, uh, the tunnel to be very specific as far as the path that it can use. And if one of the link in the path is not available, it will certainly take the path down until the links become available one more time, right? So next we need to reconfigure tunnel one to have a dynamic path to back up the explicit path that's already configured. Okay, we need to make sure that once the backup path is utilized, it will never fall back to the original path until the tunnel is shut down. Okay, so that right there is telling you that we do not want any kind of uh, re-optimization to happen once the failover has occurred to the backup path. And the way to do that is with the lockdown command. So going back to the R1 tunnel one, we can configure a backup path by using a preference number. So, so far we only have one path option, which is the preference one. We can make a backup alternative uh, path with the number two, right? So it can be any number that's larger than one, obviously. And we say we're gonna make it dynamic and we also want to lock it down so that this particular tunnel or path is not a candidate for re-optimization. Okay, so do a lockdown. And as soon as we do that, you can see that the tunnel comes back up and if you show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel, you can see that now the tunnel is currently using path option number two. And in parentheses, it said this path is locked down and it's type dynamic. Okay, and now the traffic is going directly from R1 to R3 to R2. So since that is the shortest path, R1 used the dynamic calculation and figure out that path option number two right now is going to take that route. Okay, so now just to test the re-optimization piece of it, we're going to bring this interface right here back up. So on R3, you're going to do no shut. And then if you remember, we readjust the re-optimization re timer down to five seconds. So it should have re-optimize the path by now. So if you do MPLS, I do a show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel. You can see that the tunnel is still persistent on using path option number two right here. And the fact that the re-optimization timer has expired has no effect on this particular tunnel or current path because we have kind of locked it down so that it would not go through a re-optimization process. Okay, what we can also do is just to prove that is to manually force the reoptimization to happen with the command MPLS traffic eng reoptimization tunnel one. Okay, you can see that uh, doing that has no effect on the current path that's locked down. Okay, the pretty much the only way to recover it or uh, that from a tunnel using the path option number two and make sure it goes back to option number one is to shut down the tunnel and then do a no shot to force out the path calculations to happen one more time. Okay, so we're gonna have to wait for the tunnel status to come up. Looks like it takes quite a while this time. Let's see what's happening. Okay, All right, looks like it came up already right there. So we are back on path option one again with type explicit, name explicit. And here we are back on the original path with router three, four, five, two. Okay, so that's how you could create a backup path option as well as how to lock down your path so it does not go through the re-optimization process. And that's complete our task number three. Okay, so you can see that the explicit path option is not much to it. It's pretty straightforward to configure. The path is pretty much fixed and either up if all the links are up and the, some of the conditions are met or the links will be down if those conditions are not met. But for the dynamic path options, we haven't really enforced any kind of conditions to the tunnel. So it's pretty much is free to pick up any path as long as the links are up and has enough bandwidth because bandwidth is the only condition that we place on the tunnel right now. But in a later video, you will see that we'll be adding some intelligence to the dynamic path uh, selection process by using some of the LSP attributes. Okay, you also saw that there is a is it possible for you to combine both explicit and dynamic paths together with the loose option when you define the explicit path in case you only want to enforce the 
explicit path for only part or segment of your network. And that's pretty much wraps up our video on MPLS TE explicit versus dynamic path. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmates.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.